Which is better, real estate or option trading? Let's answer that question starting right now. Over the past 24 years, I've owned and traded millions and millions of dollars of both real estate and stocks and options. Because of that, I know the advantages and disadvantages of each one of them. I'm going to share with you what I like and what I dislike about both those asset classes. And I encourage you to stay tuned in until the very end of this video because there I'll tell you which is my favorite and why it's my favorite. This will help you make sure that you are spending your time, money, and energy on the investment that best fits you. There's a lot to love about real estate. One of my favorite things about real estate, if you buy the way we do, then you're buying a property that needs work. Because of that, as we fix it up, we reap several benefits. First, we get to be a part of making a neighborhood better. That's great, but it doesn't actually put money into our pocket per se. However, that feeling of being a part of improving a community, actually having your neighbors come up to you and thank you for what you're doing to the property, well, although you can't put a dollar figure on it, it does make your heart feel good. This is something that you can't do in option trading. Generally, you're not going to improve a big company like, say, for example, Coca-Cola. You don't get that warm, fuzzy feeling that you can get in real estate. In addition to feeling good about what you're doing with real estate, as you improve a property, you should be adding value to it. So in reality, you're actually creating wealth out of thin air. And this doesn't apply to just houses. Over the years, we've done this with over a thousand houses. However, we've also done this with small and large apartment buildings and complexes. We've even done this with multiple mobile home parks. Adding value to property is a great way to build your net worth and increase your cash flow. You see, you can't do that with ops trading. You can't fix up your stock certificate or your ops position like you can a house. As a stock and option trader, although you can improve your position by selling options, there's actually nothing you can do to really improve the actual company itself. With real estate, once you've completed the remodel and you rented the property out, if you decide that you want to keep it, you can then refinance the property and pull all your money out of it if you bought it right. At that point, if you bought it at a good price, you can actually pull all the money that you put into it back out so you can do it all over again. When it comes to stock and options trading, you just can't do that. I mean, you can borrow on margin and use leverage, but the problem is that if the market would have a drastic downturn, if you didn't have the ability to add cash to your account, you could literally be forced to liquidate your account at the worst possible time, thus putting yourself out of the stock and ops trading business. One of the nice things about mortgages, if you set them up the way that we do, is that you can have a fixed rate for 30 years. No matter how good or bad the economy is, as long as you make that payment, you will not lose the property. The bank can't force you to liquidate it just because they want to. As a result, you have an asset that can make you money for a very long time, possibly even forever. You simply don't have to worry about leverage with real estate if you're not over leveraged to begin with, like you might if you leverage your stock and option trading account up. However, real estate is not the easiest business to figure out, and it's definitely not easy to start. It requires a lot of hard work and possibly even some of your own money. Our goal is to buy properties that we have at least 35% equity once the remodel is completed. In order to find that one deal, we have to typically look at 15 to 20 houses, make offers on about 10 of them, and we'll end up buying one property. And that's after we screened out all those houses for sufficient equity. We find our potential houses by spending money on advertising. In order to buy a house every month or so, we have to spend anywhere from five to $10,000 in advertising just to get the leads to potentially buy that house. Now you can go the route of real estate agents and bird dogs. But it will still require a lot of time and effort on your part. Speaking of finding a deal, it can be very challenging to find what you know is beyond a shadow of a doubt a really good deal when it comes to option trading. One way we get around that is by selling options in stock that we would like to own. However, generally, we're receiving at most 10% option premium up front, which means that if we were assigned those stocks, we're buying them at a 10% discount. The 35% discount that we get from real estate is a whole lot better than the potential 10% that we get if we were assigned stock after our first round of selling put options. Now, as I've shared with you on this channel, there are many positions that we've been trading in for multiple years. And some of them, our cost basis is better than a 35% discount based on what the stock is currently trading at. But when we first start trading that position, we're most likely getting at most a 10% discount for selling that first round of put options. You can simply get better deals upfront in real estate consistently, in my opinion, as compared to stock and option trading. Real estate is a big money game. I tell people there are a lot of zeros in real estate. When it comes to ops trading, you can literally start for under $1,000. Another thing I like about ops trading is that if you have a group of stocks like we do that you feel comfortable owning, you can trade in and out of those companies over and over again. That's not the case with real estate. Once you buy a rental house, 
fix it up, and then rent it out. You then have to go through that entire process all over again to find that next deal. Once you have your core group of stable, solid companies that you're willing to trade stocks and options in, and you know what you're doing, it's a whole lot easier to find an option deal than it is to find a real estate deal. I mean, it's really, it's not even really close. I literally review over 200 potential option positions every day. It takes me anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes. If I were to view 200 potential real estate deals, it would take me days. Another advantage of stock and option trading over real estate is that it's really easy to get in and out of stocks and options. If you want to buy or sell an option, you can literally do it in the matter of a few seconds. That's not the case with real estate. A fast real estate closing is usually a week, but many times real estate closings, they can take 30 to 60 days. Yes, I have bought some property in the matter of a couple of days, but I really had to call in some major favors to make that happen. When it comes to the ease of getting in and out of the investments, Ops trading has real estate beat hands down. That's not even close. Over the years of being a real estate investor, at times I had a fairly large real estate company. At my peak, I had 30 employees and 10 subcontractor crews swinging hammers and paintbrushes. Let's just say there was a lot going on. If I wanted to grow my business, required that I had a lot of people helping me out and working with me. That's simply not the case with stock and option trading. If I have the capital and I want to grow my option trading business, I simply add a zero or maybe even two zeros to my orders. I don't need to hire a whole crew of people to grow that business. When it comes to people, if you're in the real estate rental property business, you have tenants that you're depending on to pay your business expenses. Over the years, when we screened our tenants properly, we had a lot of awesome tenants. I don't know how many thousands and thousands of tenants we've had. I know that we had a lot of them. And I remember a few of the good ones personally when I used to manage my tenants hands-on. However, I can tell you that the few that really caused me headaches, but let's just say I'll never forget what they put me through. Tenants can be great, but sometimes they can cause you a lot of grief. The same goes for employees, contractors, and subcontractors. I've had a lot of great and awesome employees and contractors, but if you're in the business long enough, you're going to run across some that, well, let's just say they aren't so great. Let's talk about the mental side of investing in real estate versus investing in options. One of the challenges I see with options that I work with and challenges that I've experienced personally is that because you have your account value sitting right in front of you every second of every day, option can really put you through a lot of emotional highs and lows if you don't learn how to control those emotions. Real estate is such a slow game that you don't have the ability to track the value of your properties every second of every day. As a result, real estate isn't as emotional as stock and option trading can be. Not only can option be tough on you if you haven't learned to control your emotions, but you have to keep in mind that the price of stocks and options, they're also affected by the emotions of other traders. Because of that, you have less control over the price of your investment when it comes to ops trading as compared to real estate. As a seasoned real estate investor, I don't like people looking over my shoulder questioning my deals. However, I will say that if you're new to real estate or ops trading, having someone look over your shoulder, it can actually be a really good thing for you. If you're borrowing money from a bank or hard money lender for a real estate deal, they will absolutely review all of your numbers. If you're trying to do a bad deal, many times those lenders whose money is actually what's on the line, they won't do the deal for you. And that might prevent you from entering a bad deal in a bad situation. That's not the case with ops trading. You don't have anyone looking over your shoulder analyzing your trade. You simply press a button and the trade is done. Because of the checks and balances with real estate, especially if you're new to the game, I believe that real estate has a little bit of an advantage over stock and ops trading when it comes to having systems in place to make sure that you're getting a fair deal. However, as a stock and ops trader, there are resources out there that can help you. For example, in my Patreon group, we have a lot of interaction within the group itself. Option trading can be a lonely game. If you're a part of a group that can give you feedback on potential trades or trades that we are all in together, that group can definitely help you become a better stock and option trader. One of the things I don't like about being a real estate investor is just all the baggage that comes along with it. Every week we're paying bills, we're paying contractors, we're negotiating with insurance policies, we're negotiating our property taxes, we're dealing with an insurance claim, we're refinancing a property, potentially having to evict tenants. It's just nonstop the things you have to deal with when it comes to real estate, especially if you have a larger portfolio. That's simply not the case with ops trading. Because of that, ops trading can be a whole lot more of a peaceful business than real estate is. There's just not as much drama going on in my ops trading business as they're in a large real estate company. In fact, with stock and ops trading, you can really just kick back, let your dividends and option premiums roll in once you've done the trade. Yes, you have to buy and sell options, but there's not that potential negotiation, conflict, and dealing with people's challenges that you face as a real estate investor. For example, if you're a real estate investor and your tenant loses their job and is unable to pay rent and refuses to move out, at that point, 
The tenant's problem of not having a job, well, it also becomes your problem. On top of that, you have surprise expenses when it comes to real estate. For example, several weeks ago, we had a central heating and air unit that went out. As a result, we had to write a check for over $5,000 to replace that unit. That doesn't happen in option trading. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, I'd love it if you just give this video a like, just bump the like button. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit the subscribe and bell notification. Now, up to this point, I share with you a lot of positive and negatives about both real estate and ops trading. Now, let me share with you a few things that only real estate can offer because they're the only reasons why I still invest in real estate. One of the most important words a real estate investor knows is depreciation. This is a legal way of avoiding taxes. Depreciation can absolutely decrease the amount of taxes that you pay to the IRS. In fact, if you own enough real estate and as a result have enough depreciation to write off, you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars or potentially even millions of dollars without having to pay taxes. And this is all very legal. For example, let's say that I paid $1.2 million for an apartment building. Let's say that the land was worth $200,000. That means that the apartment building is worth right at a million dollars. The way depreciation works is that I can then take that $1 million and divide it by 27 and a half years. If you do the math, that comes out to $36,363 a year. The IRS code says that I can make $36,363 in income and use that depreciation to write off to avoid paying taxes on that income. Depreciation is awesome, but it's something you can only do as a real estate investor. There's no depreciation write-off in ops trading unless you got that write-off because you owned real estate. Another cool technique that some real estate investors use is as follows. Say, for example, that over the years, you're able to buy 30 rental houses. For the sake of this example, let's just say that the investor had them all paid for. Let's assume that they're worth about $200,000 a piece. If you decide you want to take this approach, you can refinance one house a year at 75% of the value of that house. That would mean you could take out $150,000 of real cash each year out of your real estate company. So if you had 30 paid for houses, you can refinance one per year and pocket $150,000 completely tax free. You see, you're not taxed on a loan against your own asset. If you don't sell it, you're not taxed on it. Another advantage of real estate when it comes to taxes over ops trading is what's known as a tax-free exchange. If you bought a property, say for $100,000 and sold it a week later for $200,000, you'd realize a $100,000 gain. If you did nothing about it, you have to pay tax on that $100,000 just like you would if you made $100,000 in option trading. However, the tax code says that if you do a like-kind exchange, you're able to put off paying taxes on that profit indefinitely. In theory, you can defer paying taxes on your gains forever if it's done properly. One last important fact about real estate, before I share with you which asset type is my favorite, is that real estate is something that people will always need. That's not the case with stock and option trading. Yes, there will always be demand, but with stocks and buying and selling options, it's not something that people have to have. A place to live is something they have to have. I know the past few minutes, it might have been information overload. So now I'm going to break it down for you and make it really simple. I have a tremendous amount of experience trading in both real estate and stocks and options. If you're trying to start from nothing, where you have very little money, but you have the time, you don't mind putting forth effort, real estate is probably the way to go. You can create tremendous wealth with very little capital once you know what you're doing in real estate. And once you know what you're doing, you can do it with minimal risk. On the other hand, if you have some capital, in my opinion, Optioning is absolutely the way to go. It is so much less headache than real estate. You can achieve really good overall returns, similar to what you'd get with real estate. If you'd like to join my patrons and I, become a part of a group of ops traders that every day are trying to become more profitable and knowledgeable, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you're curious about possibly how much you can make as an ops trader, like to see how much we make on a monthly basis trading in stocks and options, check out the monthly cash flow video series at the link above in the description below. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.